So for today, we are doing algebraic fractions. What the heck is any different than a regular fractions question? Well, a regular fractions question would be this, and I'd like you all to try this. Would you please add these two together? Get a common denominator, do that whole thing. This lesson's gonna be over with quick, but it's intense, so pay attention. What's a good denominator here, Connor? Uh, six. Good. So to get that first one to be in six, you're gonna times by what? Uh, three. You got it. To get the other one to be in six, Mr. Humphreys, what are you gonna times by? And then you end up with 3 6, which is what 1 half is, plus 4 6, which makes 7 6. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Nice. Next thing you got to know is just simple. Well, how do you make that into 1 and something? The way I would think of it is that that's 6 6 plus 1 6. I break it back into fractions again. Why would you do that? Well, because look, that's 1 and 1 6. 1 and 1 6. Okay, so here's another base fraction thing you've got to know. What if I had four-thirds? What's that? One and one-third. And if you can't do these in your head real easy, then just think of it as three-thirds plus how much? Three-thirds plus one-third. So it's one and one-third. See how that worked? Okay, can you go the other way? Can you take five and one fourth, make that into a mixed number? Everybody, right now, take this, make it into a mixed number, like 26 fourths, but that's not right. Would you please figure out the answer? Compare it to the kid sitting next to you. Stay with me, so you'll be short. But I need your full attention the whole time. Raise your hand if you already know the answer. Okay, so only one third of you really know how to do this. Watch how quick it really is. You just have to go this times this plus that. So five times the four plus the one. What's five times four? 20 plus one. So it's 21 fourths. You see how I got that? Five times the four makes 20 plus the one, 21 fourths. Okay, so what if I had six and two thirds? Everybody do it quick. If you understand this, you'll have it done in probably 10 seconds. Write down the answer, compare to the kid next to you. Across the Great Divide. Tyler, what'd you get? You know this? 20 is correct. 20 over three. This times this, and then you add that. 20 thirds. Now that is six and two thirds. Do you get how it would have been kind of a pain to break it up into three thirds plus three thirds plus three thirds plus three thirds? Like, so what I'd do is think, if I had this problem and they said, make that into a mixed number, I would go 18 thirds plus two thirds. You get how that's still 20 thirds? And do you get how that is really six? Six and two thirds, does that make sense? Okay, then last but not least, what about when there's a variable in the problem? One over x plus one over two equals two. Well, my first step, if I were you and doing a fractions problem like this is I would clear the fractions. This is gonna be something you will use when you hit pre-calc. How many of you are thinking about taking pre-calc next year? All right, if you're one of those people, learn this. You can times by two everywhere. Why? Because I wanted this to cancel. Do you get how that got rid of one of my fractions? That's handy because now watch how easy it is. It's two over X plus, is this just gone? No, it's equal to what? Say it. Come on, what is this equal to? One, good. Equals two times two is four. Now I have to get rid of the other fraction. JP, what about this is making it a fraction? The denominator. 
So, what should I multiply everything by? Uh, yep. Notice I multiply all three parts by x. Stay with me. You haven't written on your iPad for a while, so I know you're not with me. Okay. This cancels this, and I have 2 plus x equals 4x. I know that got a little weird. You multiplied by an x on both sides. If this was just adding fractions, do you get we would be in third grade? So this is more complicated than adding fractions. We have to handle variables. All right, so now I multiplied everything by x, and I was left with 1 times x and 4 times x made 4x. And now I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I'd have 2 equals 3x. I'm almost done. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. 2 thirds. Raise your hand if you had that one right. All right. What do you think we're going to multiply this one by? Multiply everything by what? And just so you have an idea here, most teachers are not teaching this right now. They're teaching kids how to just add or subtract fractions, but I think we handled that already on the basic 20, and so most of you are good at that. So I'm able to teach you this cool algebra way of solving them. What do you think we should times by, sir? Maybe six. I agree. We're gonna times by three and two at the same time. Now I know I could have just said six, but watch how awesome this is. If I multiply by two times three in all three spots, that'd be like timesing by six in all the spots. But then this and this cancel, and that and that cancel. And look, Mom, no more fractions. See how fast that was? You went from a complicated question that had fractions to no fractions at all because of canceling. 3 is equal to 2x plus 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. And if you can't solve that one, time to go back to regular algebra. Do you get how from here it's just two steps? Super easy. Eddie, what's the next step? Good. That makes negative 21. Final step, Eddie? There you go. So the answer is negative 21 halves. If I asked you to make that into a mixed number, would you know it was like about 10-ish? Negative 10 and what? One half. One half. If you're not good at that, you have to be able to go, that's like 20 over 2 plus 1 over 2. That's 10 and a half. 10 and a half. The negative just comes down. Yes? Would we have to move into decimal form? Nope. We're, it's all about fractions today, so you just leave your answers as fractions. All right. I'm um, going to get into the slides a little deeper. Everybody look at this. Your first job, make that into a mixed, no, sorry, not a mixed, an improper fraction. You know, though this times this plus that thing. Humphreys, three times the... Oh, yep, so three times the five, and then... Plus the yep. So 3 times the 5 is 15 plus the 3 made, 18 fifths, equals x plus, and let's save a step. Let's do the, the 2 and 2 thirds that same exact way. Mr. Humphreys, I think you, you're good enough at it. Just do it in your head quick and tell me what you get. 8. 8 what? You are correct. And now did you learn anything about how to clear the fractions out? I strongly recommend the clear the fractions method. Did you get that we ought to multiply by 5? And if you're extra smart, you can multiply by 5 and 3 at the same time. I know that's like 15, but I like it this way. Because, Eddie, do you see anything that will cancel? The 5 and both 5 and 1. Yeah. And do you get if that blue 5 times 3 had been a 15? It wouldn't be so obvious. Then you'd have to, like, work at it. So this is much easier. And these threes cancel. Now, 3 times 18 is a pain. 
I want to tell you, it's 54. And I'm still bringing this down. So 54 equals 5 times 3 times x is 15x plus 5 times 8 is 40. But again, once you get to there, it's, you've done this since sixth grade. Subtract 40, divide by 15, super easy. So what's hard about today? That they have fractions. Well, either you gotta know how to add, subtract, multiply, or divide them, or you gotta know how to clear them. And let me tell you, clearing them is so much easier. If we had to do this the normal way, we would have had to find common denominators, which takes a long time. And then you'd have had to do that on two separate problem or two separate parts. And it would have been like six steps. I just multiply by the two denominators and it clears right up. So will this, you know, I know some of you are like, I can just cross multiply. Don't, it's so much faster to do the way I just taught you. You're old enough to go cross multiply is the slow way. Watch this, this is gonna be good. You don't cross multiply, a lot of people say you should, but no. You times by x on both sides, and you times by 12 on both sides, all at once. And then watch what happens. x cancels, 12 cancels. And you're left with just one little thing, divide both sides by eight, and you're done. What do we do? We multiply by the denominators. So much better than cross multiply. The problem with cross multiply is too, people think cross multiply works on a lot of different places. It doesn't. Cross multiply rarely works, but clearing and multiplying by the denominator always works. So this way is really, really cool. So let's try it one more time. Uh, eight over X equals uh, one over seven. What two things should I multiply by at the same time to save a step? Because you all like saving time, right? Kennedy, tell me one thing I'm gonna multiply by. X. Yep. Marcella, tell me something else we multiply by. Seven. And then let the canceling begin. Connor, tell me something that cancels. The seven. Yep. Studer, something that cancels. And then what I'm left with is seven times eight, which is 56, equals one X. Boom, I'm done. You see how this is a pretty good way to do it? And the cool part is, I know, some of you are like, oh, I like to cross multiply. Go ahead. But it'll take you more steps and it can't work on this kind of question. And my way would work. Cross multiply doesn't work here. But my way does. Multiply everything by two things, the two denominators. Eddie, write this one down. Trucky, what's one thing we have to multiply by? Now, here's a common mistake. Kid goes, well, I did multiply by x. See, I got one on each side. Do you get that that one side has to be distributed so that the x has to be multiplied on both things? All right. Lily, what do you think we could multiply by that'll clear the other thing? So if you like doing it in two separate steps, you can. But I personally think you can handle two steps at once. Do you get that has to be faster if you're doing, you don't have to rewrite the whole thing then. It'll definitely be faster if you can handle it. Now what cancels? Jay James, tell me one thing that cancels here. Um, yeah. Yep, because there's one on top and one on the bottom. Mac, do you see something else that cancels? Threes. Yep. JP? What's that equal? 15. Plus x equals 6x. And from there, again, it's a little more complicated, but it's just a two-stepper. 
Marcella, first step. Got variables on both sides. Trickier one than normal. Subtract x, you were close. Happens all the time. But this is being added, and so you always want to do the opposite of how it was attached. So since it was a plus x, you do a minus x. And then you got 15 equals 6x minus x is 5x. We're almost done. Taylor, last up. Actually, 5. Because that'll make this cancel. There you go. Okay, so to sum it all up, you have to know how to add fractions. We already practiced that. Subtract fractions. Same exact thing, you just subtract. Multiply fractions. I hate to even have to review it, but I know somebody's not going to remember this. You just times across the top and you times across the bottom. That's all there is to it. Multiply is the easiest kind. And last, it's divide fractions. I'll probably write this out. Two-thirds divided by four-fifths. I told you this in first semester, but some of you weren't in my first semester class, so some of you won't remember. Does anybody remember? You change this into two-thirds times, say it if you know it, five-fourths. Notice the bottom one flips. Then it's just multiply. Two times five is 10. Four times three is 12. 10 twelfths. Last thing I want to talk about in fractions is reducing. In my opinion, the best way to reduce. Five times two over six times two. Because if you can factor it, you should. And then anybody with a decent enough IQ to be in this room should be able to go, oh, it's five, six. Whereas if you do it the old way, sometimes it's hit or miss. Kids will be like, uh, they'll like maybe do five fourths, for example, for the answer. But if you write out five times two for this and six times two for that, you're not going to screw it up then. You'll go, oh yeah, five, six. Would you please use that same technique to simplify 30 over 36? Write this as something times something. Write that as something times something. I think a lot of you were taught wrong on this back in the day. I hate to say that. I really wish people would have taught it this way. If I do this, you might go, well, I can do that. Uh, three times, not many people are going to know this, but three times 12. But the problem with doing it that way is, yeah, those threes cancel, but you left with 10 twelfths, which still reduces. So do you get there would have been a smarter way? What's another way to make 30 besides 3 times 10? Yes. Six and, five. six and 5. And then 6 and 6. And then boom! 5, 6. See how easy that is? So if you have had trouble with reducing, that's your way. This is an awesome way to reduce. Make it into a multiply. And it even fits with my favorite saying, if you can factor it, you should. Okay? All right. So can you add? I hope so. Can you subtract? It's just like add. Can you multiply? Let's multiply across the top and the bottom. So easy. Can you divide? Mm, I don't know. Most of you can. 2 over 4 over 3 over 9. No, no, 3 over 10. Would you please take 2 fourths divided by 3 tenths? Do that little technique I taught you, and then compare with the kid next to you and see if you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. This is the divide part, the hardest part. Remember to do a little canceling because your answer will be really big unless you reduce it. Twenty over twelve. Hmm. Five times four. Four times three, boom, five-thirds. Raise your hand if you had. Five-thirds. Nice. Okay. Then, should be able to handle these questions like we're flying. 
go really fast. Can you change that into like 24 fifths or something like that? It starts with that times that. Raise your hand if you knew it was 39. Nice, seven times five is 35, add the four. 39 fifths, okay? Good enough on that page. What if you had six and one ninth? Nine times six is 54, plus one is 55 ninths. Did you follow that, that make sense? Okay. Then what if they have the big fraction and they want, and they want a, like a, a mixed number, like six and one half, except I'm telling you that's not right. Figure out what this one would be. So here's how I'd do it. I'd be like, 20 over two would have been really nice, but that won't work. So I can do 18 over two though, plus one over two. You get how I'm thinking that? 18 over two plus one over two makes 19 over two. And that's nine and a half. Raise your hand if you had nine and a half, nice. Then a uh, fraction, this, it's almost insulting. I don't wanna go to like little shaded in circle thingies. Um, and we've talked through all those rules. I know you'd be able to add these together, super simple, because they have a common what denominator. This would be still a common denominator. This would be a little more tricky. Let's do one where you gotta get a common denominator. Try that one. Six ninths plus one half. Pausing. If you never got fractions before, it might've been because you really literally weren't ready for it when you learned it the first time. You're older. You're a lot smarter than a kid was when you were your age. Imagine you right now are against a fourth grader. You feel like you're smarter than them? Probably. How about you against fourth grade you? Way smarter than that. So you can handle learning it way better. So if you were like, I suck at fractions, maybe you weren't ready. Now you can learn it all in one day. It isn't that bad. 21 eighteenths. I'd be fine with that answer, by the way. You can leave it like that. If you really wanted to, you could say, 18 eighteenths plus three eighteenths, and that would make it one and three eighteenths. But I'm okay with this, or one and three eighteenths, whichever you'd rather. Moving on. Now, this kind I don't like only because it's hard to figure out what they want. What number, by the way, you replace that with N, can you add to the numerator and denominator of five sixths to get three fourths? Hmm. All right. Here's five sixths. They just said something complicated. Let's say it again. What number, N, can you add to the numerator and denominator? of five over six to get three fourths. Now that I changed it into an equation, I think that the teacher actually messed up the question. Unless it has to be in sixths. No, nope, that doesn't make sense. All right, I don't like it, we're moving on. Going to this one. Multiply, oh, that's super easy. Just multiply across the top three, multiply across the bottom 10. I hope you whenever you see multiplies, you're like, oh, these are these kind. Don't get them confused with divides where you have to flip and multiply. Okay, on this, I've heard it called drop, switch, flip. Drop this one down, switch this to times, flip this to 10 ninths. If you wanna remember it as keep, change, flip, that'll totally work, but I like drop, switch, flip. 
drop the first one down, switch it to times, and then flip. Final answer on this one, 10 over 36, which does reduce, they're both even, two times five, two times 18, twos cancel five eighteenths. Drop, switch, flip. Now one thing, fractions only play nice with other fractions. If you want this to be a fraction, you can always put a one under it, like that. Get out the fraction now. And now you can do the common denominator thing. So a lot of people get stuck on these when it's really pretty easy, you just put a one underneath and now it's a fraction times a fraction, which is the easiest kind of all. We don't even need a common denominator. 50 over three. The most tragic thing you can do is to think, I'll just times the top and the bottom by five. No. This means five times, flip this, 10 thirds, and that five is not a five over five. Five over five is one. That is not a five over five, it's a five over one. Okay, that's it. You've done it. Your homework is a Schoology quiz. I think you'll find it fairly easy. Please open it right now. And I'll just be able to verify that you are in it. And that's all I have for you for the lesson for today.